I was uh, just doing a quick photo uh, photo shoot for an article I'm writing um, for a magazine coming up, and uh, one of the things I was looking at was actually how you do pattern copying. Now, obviously, we've had a recent video where we've done sign writing with the uh, the copy attachment, and the other thing that uh, you can do on the Talk Work Center is actually using the pin and uh, following a, a track. So what I've got here. And as I've uh, shown you in the past, I've got this uh, this pin that goes into the table, and just give you a bit of a closer look at that. It's uh, got a, a quarter inch end, and uh, as I said, I can't remember what the other end is, but three eighths or something doesn't really matter. Um, I'm not using that end at the moment. Uh, what I've got here is a quarter inch matching up with a quarter inch bit that I have mounted in my my router, and that just drops into the table there. Now the router itself. And again, I'm not sure if I've shown this before, but to, uh, to change the uh, router bit is uh, very easy, actually. You just drop off the, the plunge lock. Well, what was originally the plunge lock when this was a plunge router, the plunge lock is now actually used to hold the router and lock it into the, into the uh, work center. And I can literally just lift that off, drop that on, do my bit change, and hopefully this will go on nice and smooth. I always seem to have a trouble getting them nice and lined up when I'm actually talking about them. Drops back in, plunge lock, lock set back on, and that's now rock solid. Okay, so that's step number one. Step number two, once we've got those set up, obviously, is we now need to cut a track of um, basically copy the original item that we want to do and uh, copy it into a into a pattern. And let's just uh, suppose I'm going to take this board here, and this is what I'm going to cut my pattern into. So I have my pattern. Uh, where should I put somewhere? Here it is. I have this original object that I want to copy. In this case, it's one of the uh, of Keith from uh, Yes in Engineering. He he does a racing kangaroo, and this was one part of that. And I would secure that down. I would uh, either screw it on or or some form of uh, fix it, fixing that to that surface. And I put a couple of rails on either the side just so it has no no tendency to rock whatsoever. And then with the router bit lined up directly above the pin, I would assume that's all fixed down, I would flip the whole thing over and then hold it up against the pin and go all the way around it with by feel, a very light pass initially, then plunge a bit deeper until I cut a nice track. Once I've done that, remove the originals. And this is my, my final one. And you end up with uh, this, and this is my original uh, track or template, if you like, for uh, cutting future copies of the, the racing kangaroo. Now, oh, those holes, by the way, if you're wondering, is because I quite often use the Welco clamps uh, with the, this pattern, and so I can bring a piece of timber in, quickly use the Welco clamps to clamp it in place, cut a bit out, slide it along, clamp it up again, and uh, repeat. Um, in this case, I'm not doing that. I've actually just physically screwed a piece of board. Uh, this is what I'm going to cut it out of. Is screwed to the other side. Next step is to uh, actually once again line the router directly above the pin there. And I'll just plunge it down, get it nicely lined up, lock that axis. Lock this axis, which I've already done, and the last thing I do is then bring the board in, and I'll plunge down again, and I'll just check to make sure that the router bit is actually plunging just through the workpiece into the top of the pattern, and then I set my my plunge lock there. That way, there's no point going too deep, but I know how deep I need to go to cut right through the pattern. Can't move that now. Obviously, it's locked in place. I now drop the pattern on top of the pin, and so that's now restrained, so it can only go around the uh, the object. And I haven't done one for a while, so I can't remember exactly how it goes. So the first pass is going to be all very much by feel. That's about it. I've got the router ready to go. I'm just going to turn on some safety equipment, and uh, I'll do a very light pass initially, just so I can find the outline of the uh, the kangaroo. And then I'll start plunging in and do another couple of passes to, to cut the kangaroo loose.
the stop part way through just so you can see. There's the the pattern. I've just done a first pass, just a light one, just to get the outline. Obviously the original's still on the back there. And what I'll do now is I'm going to continue to follow that path again, plunging down through the work, and I'll do the, uh, the whole thickness now in uh, two, possibly three passes. There's the final, final pass, and now there is our new, perfectly copied kangaroo, and I can just duplicate that over and over and over and produce as many of these as I like.